Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I did try to hit some garage sales today, didn't really find anything, so there's not going to be any garage sale finds videos this week, unfortunately. Uh, it's been really dry for the last couple weeks. I picked up a monitor for free and a TI-83 for two bucks, but that's really about it. Nothing worth uh, making a video about. And something on my eye right there, so I had to stop the video. Not exactly sure what it was, but I am really excited because today we have a PC upgrade video. Right in front of me, I have about $125 worth of PC components. A majority of this stuff is new. The only used thing is inside this box right here. I bought this for 20 bucks off eBay and you guys will get to see what it is in just a second when I unbox everything. If you guys want to check out any of these parts, the links for them will be in the description. A majority of the stuff is for upgrading the cooling configuration inside my sleeper PC because when I originally built it, I had a budget of around 350 bucks and I wasn't really too concerned about cooling. I have a couple other parts in here too, unrelated to cooling like a network card and a uh, DVD burner because for some reason mine just decided to die. Uh, so I will install those in this video as well. But I'm starting to ramble now. Let's go ahead and take all this stuff out of the box and see if it arrived in one piece. I finished recording this video and then I realized not once throughout the entire video did I mention the specifications of my PC. So let me do that right now. Inside the system I have an AMD FX 6300 currently running at 3.8 gigahertz. I have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM in here. I have two Western Digital black hard drives, each of them 640 gigabytes in capacity. I have a 480 gigabyte PNY solid state drive and I have a Zotac GTX 750 Ti with two gigabytes of onboard video RAM. As you can see, I have all the stuff out of the shipping boxes at this moment, and of course I'm going to take them out of their own corresponding boxes in just a second, but it's easier for me to tell you guys what exactly this stuff is while they are still in their boxes because they are all labeled, and if I took them out, I wouldn't know what any of this stuff was actually called. So I'm going to start from my right and work my way over to the left. Right here I have a Lighton DVD drive. I bought this because it was the cheapest thing out there. That's about it. It's going to get the job done. That uh, should work just fine. I have four cooling fans up here right in front of me. Uh, three of them are from Arctic from the F8 series. Two of them are the silent model and one of them is the performance model. I have one kind of more generic fan right here. This is a dual ball bearing 70 millimeter fan from StarTech. I'm just going to use this to replace the uh, fan on the stock AMD 8350 heatsink. And as you can see, this is an AMD 8350 stock heatsink. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm using a stock heatsink and I will get to that in just a second when I have the computer right out in front of me. It's easier to explain when the computer is out and over here. Uh, this was the only used part. I got this for 20 bucks off eBay and I do have um, some regrets about it, but I think it's still going to get the job done just fine. Uh, right here, I have a TP-Link wireless card uh, because my current wireless dongle is going out. Once again, this was one of the cheapest things out there that was going to get the job done, so that's why I bought it. I have a Rico 5.25 to 3.5 inch hard drive bay right here. I actually already reviewed one of these, so if you want to check out that review, the link will be in the description. I really liked it, and I went ahead and ordered another one um, to space out my drives and give them a little bit more room to breathe. Right below that, you can see a bottle of 3-in-1 because... I needed some more three in one for some reason I was out. I used this to oil the bearings in uh, fans on old computers. I have some Velcro right here because the cable management in my system is absolutely atrocious and I would like to fix that. And all the way to the left, I have, I believe, six SATA cables because I am completely out of SATA cables, so it would be nice to have some laying around. Two things were hiding down here, so I missed them at first, but I also bought a Molex 2 3-pin fan splitter for all of these fans, and I also have a little tube of Arctic Silver 5 right here. So I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that almost everything looks good. The bad news is that almost everything looks good. So two items arrived in less than optimal condition. The Orico drive bay arrived with a pretty substantial dent on the back of the case. It must have taken a lot of force to do that because these drive bays are pretty sturdy. So um, it doesn't look like it's going to affect function in any way. So I don't think I'm going to return it. It's just going to take too much time. It's not worth it. Uh, if it doesn't work, of course, I'm going to return it. But that doesn't look too bad. It should still work just fine and then the uh, one of the f8 fans the pro model arrived like all smashed up well the box anyway was all smashed up and it was kind of just like jammed in the box it looked like someone had returned it and the uh, sleeve right here was super super dusty I had to uh, wipe that off because it was just nasty so I'm not really too happy about that either because this is advertised as being new and 
it did not look like it arrived in new condition um so hopefully this one still works as well we won't really know if any of this stuff or all of this stuff works until we plug it in so i'm going to bring my system out i'm going to show you what exactly i'm going to upgrade and then we're actually going to make the upgrades all right, so we are inside my PC, and the first thing you guys probably notice is the fact that cable management is absolutely awful inside here. So good thing we got this Velcro. I'm going to tie all of that up when I have finished all of the upgrades. So right here, you can see the stock heatsink. I'm going to replace this with that AMD FX8350 heatsink. And the reason I'm using the 8350 heatsink, because one, it's a low profile heatsink. And that means I can still use this side panel with the air intake on it. Basically, this is a cold air intake for the CPU cooler. Really neat um, piece of case design. And I'm actually going to wedge an 80 millimeter fan in between this shroud and the air intake to push cold air into the CPU cooler. So that's also part of the upgrade. Another reason I chose this is because it does a decent job at keeping the 8350 cool, which I believe it's clocked at like 4.2, 4.5 gigahertz. So I'll probably throw an annotation in because I think that number is wrong. Um, but since it keeps the AMD 8350 cool at those clock speeds, I thought it'd be just fine cooling the 6300 at whatever I plan to overclock it to, which I'm going to try to get this up to 4 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz, somewhere around there. And that's also why I am upgrading the system because I want to bump the clock speed of the CPU up just a tad from what is that now. I have like a uh, 300 megahertz overclock on it right now. It's sitting at 3.8 gigahertz, but I would really like to break that four gigahertz barrier. When I cobbled together this PC two years ago, I used fans that were close to, if not over 10 years old. I mean, they're decent fans, they're ball bearing fans, but I would like to replace them uh, just to prevent the chance of a failure. So I'm gonna put that Arctic F8 Pro fan on the back right here. That's gonna be our air outtake fan. I'm gonna put a F8 silent fan up here, and then another F8 silent fan is going to go right on that case cover. And finally, I'm gonna focus on the bay area right here. This hard drive is going to be put in that Orico drive bay, and I'm going to replace the DVD drive up here. The cable management in here was so bad, I just decided to pull everything out and redo it all over again. I mean, it was just a tangled mess. It also makes things a lot easier to work now because as you can see, everything's pretty much clear. So I was recording the entire installation so I can make sort of a time lapse, but unfortunately I just accidentally deleted like 10 minutes of footage so you didn't get to see the last 10 minutes. So what I've done so far is installed two of the uh, Arctic fans. I have the F8 Pro in and one of the F8 silent fans in. And now I'm going to take the other F8 silent fan and throw it in between the shroud and the case panel. That actually worked out a lot better than I thought it would. As you can see, I have the shroud mounted to the fan right now. I was originally planning on using the plastic clips I was originally mounted with to mount it to the fan, but unfortunately the spacing between the fan and the bezel of the shroud was too large and these clips wouldn't work, so I just resorted to using the uh, screws that came with some of these fans because I didn't need all of them, and that worked out just fine. Okay, so the PC is reassembled and ready to go. As you can see, I tried with cable management. It's still chaos. It's organized chaos. I mean, there's nowhere really to put the cables in this older case, so they're just kind of all sitting here. Those Velcro ties worked really well, though. really like those. I highly suggest you guys go check those out because it's a great way to uh, hold cables together. But this is going to be our first power on test. So uh, actually, the power supply is already on. So let me go ahead and hit that button. And so far, it seems like everything is working well. I have the side panel back on, and now I need to verify that this fan on the side is working. This originally had a filter mounted right behind it, but it was hindering the movement of the fan, so I had to take it off. I actually really liked that on the case because it was preventing quite a bit of dust from getting into the CPU heatsink, but I had to remove it. I had no choice. Let's power it on now. And there we go. That is functioning just fine. 
So far, so good. Those fans are actually pretty quiet. The only thing I can hear is my Rosewell PCI exhaust fan. That thing is pretty loud. As you saw before, I tried to quiet it down with some oil, but uh, it didn't do too much. We've actually been sitting right under 50 degrees Celsius, which is pretty impressive considering that beforehand I would hit uh, 60 to 65 degrees while running Prime 95. So pretty happy with these results so far. I'm going to let this run for a bit longer and I'm going to start overclocking this. Oh man, guys, I've reached that point in the video where I'm just absolutely absolutely exhausted. I'm going to try to wrap this video up as quick as possible, but I've been putting this system through its paces for the past couple hours just to make sure we are holding steady at 4 gigahertz, and we are indeed holding steady at 4 gigahertz. I'm not going to bump it up to 4.1 gigahertz just because I, I start to have some temperature issues at that point, and uh, yeah, it's just not stable. So uh, 4 gigahertz is all we are going to get out of this configuration. Keep in mind that the stock clock speed is 3.5 5 gigahertz for the AMD 6300 uh, FX processor. So we are sitting at a 500 megahertz overclock with the stock uh, AMD 8350 heatsink. So I am definitely pretty happy with that. Now, I do have some regrets and I'll talk about those in just a second when we get closer to the end of this video. I'm not going to run a benchmark or anything. I know this isn't, you know, the fastest system in the world or the most powerful system in the world. And of course, my monitor just died. Yeah, small channel struggles when you can't afford equipment that actually works. Come on, turn back on. There we go. And of course, I don't remember what I was saying before the monitor completely derailed my train of thought. Come on. Oh, it's coming back to me. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. So I'm not going to run a benchmark because all of that is just numbers. I could care less about the numbers. I want to see how this upgrade is actually going to benefit me. How is it going to make my life better? How is it going to cut down on the rendering time of my videos, uh, and how's it going to make my editing experience better. And I've already run a little test to see if it made any difference, and it actually did. It did cut down on the render time substantially. Uh, one of the main reasons is that I didn't realize cool and quiet was enabled in the BIOS, which is, you know, messing around with the clock speeds and everything, and that was on when I had the processor clocked to 3800 megahertz. So that's probably why it was running so cool with that stock heatsink. Uh, I turned it off, and performance is overall much better. I don't know why I left that on. I guess I just missed it uh, when I was configuring the system but with that off uh, I cut down about 15 minutes off the total rendering time uh, including the 200 megahertz overclock so uh, yeah definitely a pretty substantial performance increase right there as far as video editing is concerned you know what at this point I don't even feel like pulling out the tripod and seeing everything up so I'm just gonna hold the camera up like this and we're gonna swing around freely like this for the rest of the video so what exactly do I regret about this upgrade well you guys could probably guess my first regret and that's the fact that I bought an 8350 heatsink. I don't know what I was thinking. I was out of my mind there. I was just trying to save some money and take advantage of that cold air intake at the same time. Uh, there are better options out there and I should have just considered buying a new heatsink because you can get a new heatsink for 20 bucks and you can get a pretty decent new heatsink uh, for 20 bucks. Probably one that's better than the 8350 heatsink and Sudos was uh, talking to me about this in the comments section of my last video and I totally agree with him. And by the way, uh, uh, one of my viewers has a really awesome sleeper build. I will link to it in the description if you guys want to check out another really cool sleeper PC. Uh, I highly suggest you go check out Sudos is pseudosis pseudos PC build, sleeper PC build. Second regret, I should have bought a thicker fan for the CPU heatsink. I have no idea why I bought a 10 millimeter fan. I don't know what I was thinking. It was late. I was trying to get all these parts together and that was a really stupid decision. So two kind of dumb decisions. They kind of worked out in the end. I mean, we got to four gigahertz and that's holding stable, but that CPU fan doesn't move much air at all. I should have opted for something like a 20 to 25 millimeters thick because yeah, it's doing an okay job, but it could be better and I could probably get this to hold stable at 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz with a thicker fan on that heatsink. And I know I sound disappointed, but I'm not. I had a lot of fun upgrading the PC. I have a DVD drive that actually works now. My hard drives are running a lot cooler in these Orico hard drive bays. Uh, I have a uh, actually a usable wireless connection now. It's nothing great, but it's usable. For some reason, my uh, MediaLink dongle just decided to crap out on me. So uh, yeah, I can finally get back on the internet with this PC. 
And at the same time, the system's running a little bit cooler, a little bit quieter, and I got a small performance increase out of it. So overall, I am definitely happy with these upgrades. Um, just one thing to note, the system does get pretty hot when running Prime 95. It got in the realms of 65 to 67 degrees Celsius, but that's not really a real world load. When I'm actually editing video and rendering video, it doesn't go above 60 degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah, I don't have a problem with that. 60 degrees Celsius is my cutoff, and it stays right below that at 58 to 59 degrees Celsius. So perfectly happy with the temperatures, uh, with these upgrades, and I'm going to have to call it as far as the video is concerned because I'm just done right now. Before I forget, don't forget, uh, I am having a June giveaway. The link for that will be in the description if you want to check it out. And I'm also trying to get something up for you guys uh, who are Patreons. I got a couple more Patreon subscribers yesterday after I posted the subscriber update, but I would like to do a $150 PC build and then raffle it off to my Patreons uh, if we can get at least $50 in Patreon funding a month. Uh, I really like to do that. You guys put in 50, I'll put in the 100 plus shipping and we'll make it happen. So uh, yeah, look into that. The link for that will also be in the description. That's gonna be about it for this installment of AA Computers and Technology. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post those in the comments section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. Uh, of course, do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can support me using my Amazon or eBay affiliate links, both of which will be in the description. You can also put some that was a train wreck. We're starting over. Okay, so you can also support me by checking out my Patreon. Don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page, and I will see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology. Hoping to get this video out by Sunday.